We do have a bit of an urgency. In two weeks, we could have a foot of snow here. This is the first real carving I'm going to get to do. The head honcho shows up for a surprise visit. We're nowhere near ready. Hey, Steve! Most people look at a stump, they see a stump. I see opportunity. My name is Steve Blanchard, and I'm a master chainsaw carver. Creating killer wood sculptures is my business. Together with my right-hand man, Pete Rieger, our apprentice, Ryan, and some of the best saw dogs around the globe, we always find a way to get it done. Eat, sleep, carve. It's what we do. I'm Jazz. I get to build one of my tree houses, which is something I like to do. This is what Steve does. This is his passion. He loves creating these playful, whimsical tree houses, big root bases, no straight lines at all. You can just imagine the kind of playhouse this would be for your child. I'm actually doing it for this guy, George Slusel, who has this $9 million log home up in Big White. It's like a medieval castle made out of logs. It's overlooking the village. This piece is going to be right there. The ski hill comes right by. It's going to be like a postcard. I want to do that at my house now. I'm going to make it look like one of your tree houses. Go ahead. I'll sue you. <laughs> <laughs> Holy, it's a mansion. I've never seen anything like this place, except in a magazine. Wow. Beautiful. Wow. It's like a castle. Mother Nature was our interior designer. We used all natural materials. He built the house around his carving collection. <laughs> You'll love me then. <laughs> this house is so unique in that they've really featured what some people would consider flaws in the wood, such as big burls and knots. But they've used that as a feature, and that's what I always say. You know, if you can't fix it, feature it. All right. Absolutely perfect. As you can see, we have the panoramic view. I love it. One and only. Yeah, this place is unreal. It's an awesome spot for my treehouse. People are going to see it from all over the world. It's hard for me to imagine what you're thinking about. Well, I, I got um, some ideas. It's kind of a surprise. Surprises have usually been a bit of a negative experience for me. Well, I've been an artist for around 30 years. And I haven't had one person complain about what I've done yet. I've heard that line where people saying, trust me, trust me, gets done. I get disappointed. If I say I'm going to do something, I'll do it. If I say it's going to be good and you'll be happy with it, you'll be happy with it. OK, so winter's coming. We're short on time. We're probably going to have to bring in some extra help. You know what that does? Help me out here. It could get up to around 105,000. I know you've got a great reputation. I'll, I'll go the extra mile here on this one. I'm really glad George and Steve could work things out. He'll be glad you, you know, did. You know, this is a $9 million house. It's like we can't just show up and give them a little dog house on a stick. OK. Get her done. One thing I'm known for in my tree houses is that there's no straight lines. And uh, nobody does that, except me. Yeah, you got a fair amount done already from the look of it. Really Steve's treehouse project is right on track, and he's brought in Tommy Craggs from England. Tommy doesn't say a lot, but he lets his saw do the talking. You know, he carves like fairy tale stuff. It's like a children's book come to life. You know, like freestyle carver, I'll call from your head, sketch with the chainsaw, no measurements taken, anything like that. I like figurative carving, carving people, human faces, fantasy art. Steve's also brought in Paul Furnett. His fantasy style is a perfect match. I like the dragons and wizards and things that are outside of real life. I like to stretch the boundaries of imagination and do things that other people haven't done before. I'm really excited. It's one of Steve Blanchard's signature pieces, is uh, tree houses. Wow, you got quite a bit of done already. Yeah, I've been picking at it for a while now. Do you have any drawings, Steve, out in the look Well, I don't have a set of drawings, but I have a plan. <laughs> this happens to be in my head. And you want it done in five days. Steve has his plans stored in a really safe place. They're uh, between his ears. So what am I actually doing on this? I'm kind of having a hard time about what to exactly get you guys to do at this point. 
no big deal, man. I'll show you how to do it. Let's go get the stuff. Come on. Come on. <laughs> we don't have a lot of time here, you know. Doesn't look like much now, but when I get it sandblasted and that house is sitting on it, it's going to pop. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. You have anything like this in England, Tommy? We don't have um, old growth redwood. Uh, no stumps. old growth redwood no. stumps? No, this yeah, is pretty big, massive. Big gnarly oaks. I'm looking forward to calling this. We got a great stump for this project, except that it's a little bit tall. We want to flip it over because the treehouse is actually going to sit on the roots. And we want to make a perfectly level cut. We only want to do that cut once. Ryan, bring the 066 with a five foot bar on it. Big boy. You mean this bad boy right here? That's it. First time I've used a bike before. As soon as I started cutting with it, I knew there was problems with the chain. I'm not okay, no, yeah. You gotta loosen that chain up a little bit. Did you get this when you were like 20 years old? There's nothing wrong with that saw. Just because it's old, it doesn't mean it's a bad saw. It's the same saw right here. Yeah, but from the 1940s. Ryan, him and Peter are the same. Their mouths just take off, and you can't communicate with them without, without them getting the last word. I think that the bar is too big. Irritating as hell when you're trying to do something. <laughs> Done. So let me go get the 24-inch, and it was a nice attempt on the five-foot bar, and let's just get through this thing. All right, boss. All right. What are you going to do? You got to have somebody. <laughs> The only problem with using the smaller saw on that big a cut is that you have to cut it from two directions. The first cut, it may be straight. The second cut, you may be off a little bit, so you'll get a wedge in your piece. We wanted a really level cut so that when we set the piece down, we're starting out level. Nice job. Nice Cheers. cut. Yeah, it's not too bad. Step one of 100. Pretty stoked. We're going to go check out Ryan's first commission. A couple of my buddies own a sawmill. They just asked me to carve a 14-foot old-growth cedar wood stump. I'm excited, man. I hope so. But it could be big dollars. And if Ryan nails this one, he'll have his position set here at Saw Valley. So what do you want to carve? A Sasquatch. What if Bigfoot kidnapped you and took you back to his mountain lair and you get there and there's like 20 other people there? I'm down. And he's got like a little Bigfoot petting zoo. You can be like the star attraction. He just sit there and throw like acorns at you. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to think, there's my little baby. So I'm really excited because Pete is actually going to help me on this commission. How's it going, Dale? Good, man. Nice yeah. to see you. This thing looks fantastic. Yeah, that's all right, eh? It's great. Commission, what do you talk about commission? Uh, it's like this, we carve whatever you want and you pay us, that's a commission. I thought you guys just wanted a log to carve. You never talked about money? No? No. Really, you should be paying me for this log. In two weeks, we could have a foot of snow here. We do have a bit of an urgency. I have a plan. This happens to be in my head. Commission, what do you talk about commission? You never talked about money? Look, guys, obviously there's been a misunderstanding with this thing, so I'll tell you what, I'll help you out this time. We'll carve this thing. Hell yeah. Pete is going to let me do this carving. Uh, it's like my first commission, but, you know, it's not really a commission because I'm not going to be paid for it, but this is the first real carving I'm going to get to do. There's a hollow spot up here. It's about that big. Carve a chimney and stick it out of that hole or a stovepipe or something, you know? Yeah, that's what I always say, you know, if you've got a flaw and you can't fix it, feature it. Is that what you do with your face? Ow! <laughs> Want to carve like a peaked roof? Crooked, no straight lines. There's time to put some stairs. Not seeing what you're saying. A roof, a building, and then this would look sort of like a tree. Did you bring the littler saw? Yeah, got my dime tip. Did you bring me a saw? Ryan didn't bring a saw to a carving gig. Yeah, well, You should be filling up all these saws, Do you want man. me to learn anything? Shut up. OK, I'm just saying. Just watch and learn there, pup. He just kind of goes and doesn't really tell me what to do. He just says, watch. I'm not really like learning how the saw is going to move with the wood. And watching someone saw for 10 hours is kind of boring. Sometimes it's best to just sit back and watch. I mean, if you just copy my moves and you're confident with the saw, you can do what I do. If I ever get to touch the saw, I've been watching. Yeah, watching your phone while you're texting your girlfriend. Look at that. What's going on here? <laughs>
<laughs> Steve has his plans stored between his ears, and periodically I try to peek in there and see them. It's a little bit frustrating because I came here, came here to call and I haven't actually done any yet. We still haven't started doing any work. Tommy's pretty bored and probably on the verge of being pissed off. Yesterday I sat there, bitched, complained, and he said, fuck it, and he's letting me carve. So right now I'm pumped. I've been working with him and showing him some stuff. Carve a ledge here, undercut it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Man, that kid, I don't know. Sometimes he pays really close attention to what's going on around him, detailing, everything like that. And other times, pfft. But I want to go back and talk to Steve. I'm a little worried about the treehouse project. Good day, mate. You guys from England? <laughs> hey, why is Tommy just standing around? Hey, Steve! Tommy was just standing around. I don't know what he was doing. Paul and Steve were doing a little bit of work, but I didn't see anything major going on. It seems like you guys are a little behind. I just want to make sure this job gets done. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he saw Tommy standing around, and he just thought we were wasting time. There's no way to really explain to him the process. You think I started this business and kept this business by not producing? That's what, what I'm I worried about, is that this is what you do, and you do it so well that you're not thinking about our deadline. I know what I'm doing. All right. Can I shoot something? <laughs> Feeling lucky, punk? <laughs> Come on, make my day. You know, he kind of touched a little sore spot. You know, these guys don't know what the heck I'm doing. It's really difficult to explain to them. I really hope that Steve gets his stuff out of his imagination so that we can get this thing moving. Paul, Tommy. What's this, urine samples? I thought we were getting beer. <laughs> it's not just a haphazard little shack. This is a piece of art when it gets done. Let's get back to okay. work. Huh? All right, let's do it. All right, let's do it. Having Tommy here, that guy is really fast. There's going to be a lot more carvings in this thing than he probably expected. Tommy's carving is fantastic to watch because very little strokes of the saw can create a huge amount of detail. I carved like a pixie face, leaves, mushrooms, kind of fantasy stuff. I really enjoyed it. Carving a dragon head, kind of saw an outcropping of a root, and it looked like a head to me, so you know, throw a dragon head in there. Pete's told me a few times that I really need to be careful cutting into this wood. I mean, it's a really light, easy wood to cut into and seriously can totally ruin a piece by digging too deep into it. As I was cutting, I realized that this big log is full of rot. I'm gonna have to rethink everything because this piece just became a lot more delicate. This commission came through Pioneer Log Homes, the guys that built George's amazing house at Big White. Now, Brian, the head honcho, shows up for a surprise visit. The problem is that we're nowhere near ready. I haven't had one person complain about what I've done yet. Hey, Steve! Oh, for Pete's sake. We're nowhere near ready. Looks like the customer. Hey, Steve. How you doing, man? Hey, Brian. What's up? Well, I uh, just doing a house down the road here, and uh, George asked me if I'd stop by and take a look at the progress. Tell him, don't worry about it. We're all right. I'm all right. I mean, I just need some time. A couple more days. No, just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> you don't have a couple more days. But he is anxious, just to let you know. Well, I don't mean to rush you. But... Yeah, I was just leaving. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> good right. seeing you, man. You're right. doing a hell of a job. It's looking good. He's got a long ways to go, too.
Oh, it's pretty sick there, Greenhorn. Thanks, man. Didn't think I'd see you so soon. Last day. I'm not even done. <laughs> I like that roof. I've been tapering it, been on it for the last little while. Sick job, buddy. So, Thanks, uh, man. Why don't you come by the mill there, and they'll uh, give you some logs, and you can carve them up and sell them and do whatever you want with them. Really? Yeah, I like this. It's cool. Awesome. Pete and Steve are going to be so stoked on me. Yes! <laughs> yeah! He likes it. Getting paid for this shit. I didn't think that I was going to get anything from it. Pete had my back. We battled through some shit, and it's awesome. This thing will be done by the end of the day. Come get her anytime. Right on, man. Ryan did a heck of a job. I like the carbon, and uh, I'm going to take this thing home, put it in my yard, and it's a win-win situation for both of us. I can't wait for Pete to get here, because he has no idea that Dale's actually going to give me logs. <laughs> It's cold, it's raining, it's starting to really bum everybody out. We have to load this treehouse on the truck tomorrow. I'm not sure we're gonna be ready. How's it going, fellas? Good, we're behind schedule. Check it out. Tommy. And then all these leaves will go on the fascia when we get this finished. These will go on across the house like this. Nice. Okay. You know what else would look cool? That. Well, that's where the railing goes. You kind of do the Adam and Eve thing with this, right? Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> he doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> You haven't seen the plan. <laughs> Nobody's seen the plan. We gotta do brain surgery to see the plan around here. We're gonna fly. Get back to yeah, work, so you guys. Come on. All right, you guys. Right there. Right there. That's right above the road. Yeah, let me take a look in there. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? Damn near looks okay, just let's like go. it. <laughs> Wanna do it? Yeah. Right. All right. Thank you. Really appreciate it. It was fun working with you guys. Boy, oh boy. Let's do something. Let's get out of this damn rain, man. Yeah, let's go for beer. That's a good idea. That's sure. the best idea you had all day. <laughs> this is the only time you said anything. <laughs> So I'm trying to envision a line of where I'm going to put these stairs. I'm going to make them simple and cool. Just cut, 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 cut. Not too big, not too little. I'm trying to envision a line of where I'm going to put these stairs. Are you kidding me? What were you trying to do? I think I made a couple too many overcuts and... You think? Down it went. Dale came by and liked it. He doesn't know about the, the stairs, and he also said he's going to pay me in wood. If you didn't know about the stairs, I think we're pretty safe. We can buck that off, stand it up, I'll get the torch, we'll clean it up, man, we'll just finish it up. Let's do it. I'm All done. All right, one, two, three, up. What started off as just this massive, massive screw up in my head, turns out to be a bit of a profitable enterprise. So I'm kind of proud of them. Ow. You got lucky this time, but next time, set the price beforehand, get a deposit, before you start doing anything, all right? Yeah. Hey, Pete, it's a chimney fire. Let's see that. The snow's gonna fall any day now in Big White. We're ready to load this stuff up and get out of here, finally. Look at that thing. This is the most expensive place I ever lived in. That costs extra. have to position this 1,200 pound stump perfectly and then get the treehouse on it perfectly. It's not easy. Can you just, he's almost Ho! there now. Ho! Steve. The forklift was right on the edge of this bank and you know, any wrong move and it could have toppled. Slow. You're in. Voila! Ta-da! Look at 
got it. Oh my god! <laughs> Beautiful. Wow. Here, take the box around with me. It's the perfect. Sticks. I had a box. <laughs> There's a little <laughs> mouse there. Look at that little dragon. Wow. There was always one. It meant something to them more than just a piece of wood. It has a history and it has a spirit. It feels really good to have it done. This site is incredible. The tree house matches the main house perfectly. Yeah, when you look at the back. It reminds me a lot of the house that we built here. Both of them tie in with each other. Very mystical. Oh, wow. That's so cool. We really, really appreciate this. You're Thanks. welcome, man. I'm glad yeah. you like it. Yeah. I'm really glad that the client's happy. You know, that's my job. That we come in on time and on budget, and we did. I bet I could stand up there. He's testing out the quality <laughs> now. There's probably room for a yoga mat in there. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.